Good morning, everyone. The bells from St. John's just tolled. So that means they always go about a minute or two before the hour. So we're a tiny bit early getting online, um, which is good because it gives people a chance to sort of come online before we begin. I hope today finds you well. This is Monday in Holy Week. Yesterday was Palm Sunday. Um, I'm happy to say that, um, I'm, I'm glad to say that I'm excited that it's Holy Week. Um, there's, I, you've heard me say it before, probably, there's something about this whole um, uh, sheltering in place pandemic, which feels very Lenten and um, feels very Holy Week. I keep thinking, oh my gosh, this sounds like a Good Friday sermon. <gasps> Here's something for a Good Friday sermon. So I've had lots of Good Friday sermons in my mind um, throughout this time. and um, But I, I, I'm glad that it's Holy Week because um, not only is there a Good Friday sermon in my mind, but I feel like um, with the help of Paul Blanchard and Linda Clater and Jane in the office, we've come up with a good plan for all of Holy Week from a liturgical perspective. Um, the diocese has been very helpful in putting out some information. Um, so I feel like, hi Linda, um, I feel like we're in a good place uh, for Holy Week. And I'm also excited about Easter. We, uh, I think we have a, a, a good plan for Easter. For the first time in all of this, we're going to film our Easter Sunday service ahead of time, which will give us an opportunity to, to do some editing, um, which is, again, another new technology that we're figuring out. Um, good morning, my friend. Um, hi, Pam. Uh, it's another new technology for us to figure out. Thank God Tim Preston is up for the job. So uh, we're going to put together a sermon, a, a whole a service ahead of time. Um, on Saturday, which gives, I'm, I'm excited about it. It'll have a new exciting feeling, which Easter Sunday always does. That transition from Holy Week to Easter is just sort of a burst of excitement. And hi, Pam. So uh, this will be the, uh, I think that I, I'm feeling that same anticipation that um, I love about Holy Week right now. So, on that note, uh, hi Tim, great to see you. We were just talking about Holy Week um, and um, anticipating what is to come ahead. Uh, we will be live streaming um, Monday, Thursday at 6.30, Good Friday service at noon, Stations of the Cross at 6 p.m., on Good Friday. The Easter Vigil, we're directing everyone to the cathedral in Sacramento, Trinity Cathedral, and Easter Sunday, uh, we'll be putting together here. So uh, um, I'm looking forward to getting to serious work on all of this this week. Um, it, there is a sense of joy and anticipation in my heart. So on that note, let us begin the morning devotion. Um, as always, we're working with the daily devo devotions for individuals and families um, on page 137 in our Book of Common Prayer. Let us begin. Open my lips, O Lord, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help again, and sustain me with your bountiful Spirit. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our reading from this Monday in Holy Week, year two, it's found on page 957, and it is Mark 11, 12 through 25. Uh, 
On the following day, when they came from Bethany, he was hungry. Seeing in the distance a fig tree in leaf, he went to see whether perhaps he would find anything on it. When he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for it was not the season for figs. He said to it, May no one ever eat fruit from you again. And his disciples heard it. Then they came to Jerusalem, and he entered the temple and began to drive out those who were selling and those who were buying in the temple. And he overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold doves. And he would not allow anyone to carry anything through the temple. He was teaching and saying, It is not written, is it not written, My house shall be called a house of prayer for all the nations, but you have made it a den of robbers. And when the chief priests and the scribes heard it, they kept looking for a way to kill him, for they were afraid of him, because the whole crowd was spellbound by his teaching. And when evening came, Jesus and his disciples went out of the city. In the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree withered away to its roots. Then Peter remembered and said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree that you cursed has withered. Jesus answered them, Have faith in God. Truly I tell you, if you say to this mountain, Be taken up and thrown into the sea, and if you do not doubt in your heart, but believe that what you say will come to pass, it will be done for you. So I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. Whenever you stand praying, forgive, if you have anything against anyone, so that your Father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. I will say, this is not one of my favorite passages for a number of reasons. Um, For starters, the poor fig tree, and if it wasn't in season... It comes to my mind that a much better miracle for Jesus to have done would be to say, produce fruit right now, and it would have produced fruit. Um, So I'm not sure what to do with it. This would be, um, if this were in the lectionary, and I I don't remember preaching on this particular pericope before, but I can tell you this would be a super hard sermon to preach. And it would be one of those that if this were the gospel passage that we read, I think a responsible preacher would have absolutely no choice but to dive into it and try and explain what's going on here. And that would take an awfully lot of work and research and uh, meditation and prayer and study on the part of the preacher to um, pull it together. Um, So one of the disadvantages of reading the Bible, as we are right now, is we're going through bigger chunks, parts that we don't always read, And um, we don't have time to sort of pull it apart with what is being said here. But this is certainly a challenging passage. What happens right before this, which would have been really nice to have had in one of these times together, but it was the reading for um, Saturday when we were not gathering um, in this form, is the blind man um, yelling, Jesus, Son of God, have mercy on me. And the disciples, everybody trying to shut him up because he was making such a ruckus. But Jesus hearing him and healing him of his blindness. Now that would be a really lovely one for us to be preaching on or talking about right now. But that's not what we have. So this is um, Palm Sunday happened right before this in the in the scripture, the triumphal entry into Jerusalem. Um, And now we have the turning over of the um, tables of the money changers and the the dealers in um, the temple. So um, let's just say Jesus' frustration is running very, very high right now. Um, And I think maybe we can attribute some of his great impatience with the fig tree to his great impatience with humanity right now. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Let us pray. Great 
Gracious God, we come to you in this Monday in Holy Week, and we give you thanks for your presence with us and among us and in all of the spaces between us. Low battery. Low battery. Low battery. Excuse me one second. So sorry about that. Ah. <sighs> Gracious God, we give you thanks for your presence in the spaces between us right now. And especially now, while the spaces between us feel so great. Lord, I thank you for pulling us together through our baptism, through your unending love for us and helping us to know that we are sisters and brothers to one another and nothing can separate us because of your love for us, which is insurmountable. Lord, we pray for all of those people who are on our hearts and in our minds right now. We pray for those people who are struggling right now in this pandemic. We pray for those who are sick. We pray for all medical professionals who are caring for them. We pray for all people who cannot isolate in their homes, either because they are economically unable to or because they fulfill an essential service that we all depend on and need. Lord, I pray that you strengthen them, protect them, comfort them, give them a sense of being fortified by your love and care. Gracious God, I pray that you minister to all those who are sick and who are afraid and anxious right now and who need you most of all. Lord, we lift up before you all those who have been commended to our prayers. We pray for Doris, Orville, Yvette, Catalina, Morris, Jennifer, Wes, Krista, David, Richard, Elizabeth, Emily, Jane, Leah, Michael, Selah, Tom, William, Joyce, Alicia, Katie, Christopher, Joan, Marion, Alan, Grace, Barbara, Roger, John. And Lord, we pray for all of those that we say aloud now or those who we name silently in our hearts. Lord, I pray for Harry, Carl, and Max. I pray for students and teachers, parents everywhere who are homeschooling today. Gracious God, we thank you for the gift and the bounty of St. Paul's Church and of your entire church everywhere that we find ourselves. Lord, I pray that this will be a time of understanding what it means to truly love and care for one another in the sacrifices that we are all making. And in this blessed time of Holy Week, Lord, I pray that we will come to a greater understanding of repentance, a greater understanding of responsibility, and a greater understanding above all, a greater experience of your love for us. All this we ask in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And we pray that you hear this prayer we pray now as your Son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine art the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Lord God, Almighty and Everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. 
Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Laura O'Connor, so good to see you there. Hi. Um, yeah, we are praying for you every single day and all of your colleagues at Kaiser. Um, I want to remind everyone, go to the St. Paul's website, take a look at both our services when they are, and not only the St. Paul's website, but also um, Church of the Good Shepherd, uh, Incarnation, wherever you normally worship, churches everywhere are offering all kinds of beautiful prayers online um, and services online. So continue to um, stay faithful to whatever your practice is and incorporate in that worshiping with us in this greater circle of online worshipers. Um, because I will tell you, this is a very powerful time of prayer. The prayers of the people at St. Paul's Church are um, thriving with the communication going on among all of us. You probably notice we have a lot of names that we're offering. Um, if there's anyone whom you would like to offer, email the office, call me directly, uh, call your uh, vestry flock leader, call one another, get the word out, and uh, we will joyfully and earnestly pray for them together. Um, so much to be thankful for in this week, most especially for our connection with one another and the many, many blessings of our lives and the great blessing of being bound together in one family through God. All right, everyone, stay safe, be well, and stay in touch. God bless you all.